Well, hello there, beautiful. It's Kylie Patchett here. and Welcome to the world and finally fecking free podcast. I deeply believe that the years during and beyond perimenopause are a rite of passage. All of a sudden, we find ourselves on the precipice of a life transition where our brain literally rewires and runs out of fucks to give. We find ourselves shifting identity, no longer caring what other people think, and being invited to expand into new ways of being. Here, we share the real and raw stories from women who have been through deep midlife metamorphosis, taken a leap of faith or broken the ties that bind us in patterns of staying small, stuck, and like our needs just don't matter. This is the midlife medicine you didn't even know you needed. Stories full of joy, despair, freedom, courage, and deep self-honoring. I am so glad you found us. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to welcome everyone back to the wild and finally fucking free podcast. I feel naughty every time I say that. Anyway, that's beside the point. We are talking to the beautiful Mariska Anderson. Welcome, welcome, Mariska. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. I'm good. That's good. That's good. Now, before we started, I was saying, um, you know, I've wanted to make these much more conversational than my last podcast, which was very, you know, it was very business-like and structured and whatever. And I think that's been the journey I've been on. And we were talking about, because I said, you know, I love people to introduce themselves instead of me doing this bio. And you said, I hate bios. I hate. And this is where I want to actually start our conversation. So how would you like to um, introduce yourself? Not with a professional bio. And why do you love, why do you hate bios? Oh, bios. Oh, I, 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 well, yes, good question there. I don't actually know why I hate bios, but I suspect it's because I don't want to be crammed into a box like we talked about. But um, I think we concentrate so much on, yeah, titles for bios. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I just, I don't live up to any titles I do have. That's how it feels a lot of the time. And then I'd like to kind of supersede them. So even, yeah, I was saying, I was joking about how it would take me, you know, hours to do an Instagram bio, but those are the kinds of ones that suit me best. Like, I like toast. Yes. You know, just, uh, because that's, who doesn't like toast? And someone can, you know, that, that to me is the kind of bio that someone else could go, okay, you're my kind of person. Yes. Not because you're a doctor this or blah, blah, that, or you've written that, or you're a host of that, or the founder of this. Yes. It's, yeah, I, I think I like connecting with people like that. Cause with humans, I, um, not yes. labels. Yes. Yeah, and yes, that's yes, the yes. sort of thing that I would do at a party as well. Mm. Like I'm at a party and I'm sometimes like very shy, but sometimes I'm like to hell with it, like who cares? And if yes. I'm like sort of mingling, that is one of the questions that I'd be like, be like, so <laughs> do you like toast? I mean, it's <laughs> kind of. Easy. It's an icebreaker question. Yeah, it's an icebreaker, and yes. you're making it obvious. I'm making it obvious that I'm awkward, and then they know, and it's easy. <laughs> and then you're relatable, right? Because I, I yeah. th- here's the thing: I I feel about labels, and I have a similar. I don't know. I've had many different iterations of this feeling in me. And one of the things that we will talk about is the worthiness piece. So in my early life. Um, and I still do it. I still said to someone the other day, oh, I'm a forensic biologist by training. I'm like, what the fuck? You haven't been in a forensic biology lab for 20 years. Like, let it go, sister. And that comes from that deep, like, oh, I've done something cool sounding, but like, it's completely irrelevant. Like 20 years ago, like, I don't even know the first thing about forensic biology. I've got beautiful friends actually in New Zealand, um, that are still in forensic biology land, Um, And I think, wow, that's like amazing that you're still there. But yeah, that identification piece and the like, oh, I must be an important person. No, actually not important, worthy. And this is where I want to start because actually I'll take one step back. When you answered the call to being on the podcast, you said, I'm petrified, number one, and I just want to honour that you're here and sharing (laughs) your story because a lot of people have said that to me and the gold that has come out of their stories has been beautiful. So honouring where you felt that you were and also um, the opening line of your answers to the question was, I took a big leap, I fell in a big hole and I've been climbing my way out. So we open the story, act (laughs) one, I feel like. Yeah. 
getting something that you felt would create that feeling of worthiness. Can you start telling us a little bit of that story? Yes. Well, I I, I grew up with no uh, no idea whatsoever of like that sort of internal um, inherent worthiness that yeah. we all have, like just mm-hmm. by virtue of being born. Yes. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I didn't grow up with any of that. You had to earn your place on this planet. And mm-hmm. so I, I guess... Well, I, looking back, I definitely did sort out opportunities to really like prove myself and show who I was. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of those things before the thing that you're talking about <laughs> was yes. just the lab. I used to work in a lab at Stanford. Mm-hmm. And like, so I used to work at Stanford. And that was, I loved working there. It was great. It was horrible after a little while, but that really, that started me on that whole, ah, yeah, this feels really good because people were impressed by that. Exactly. And I was like, huh. So I got the feeling of worth without the actual real, and you know, the integrity of it really, but just yeah, little absolutely. glimpse of it whenever mm-hmm. anybody would say anything. And I didn't really, it wasn't very reflective back then. And that was like 20 years ago, by the way. So yeah. that's why I don't know why I did it. I, I sort of feel like I always was going to, and that might have been because of the worthiness piece, but mm-hmm. I came back home to New Zealand from Stanford and went, all right, I'm going to go get my PhD. Mm-hmm. And I got a fellowship. And so that sort of bolstered that whole ego thing, like, yes. oh, I'm worthy. Someone's given me a whole bunch of money mm-hmm. to study this terribly tedious thing that I can't believe yeah. I did. Um, so <laughs> I've trained in sustainable agriculture. So, yes. mm, I mean, that is cool. I Don't mm-hmm. get me wrong. Very cool. Uh, just not my kind of call but yes. I, I I did the defense so I defended it I was st- sitting in this room with uh, it might have been one other female in there but I don't think so actually there's you know sort of men sitting around a table judging and I just stood and defended it and then they'd ask me a bunch of questions and I'd totally tripped up on the maths ones and completely forgotten the analysis that I did so I was yeah. I was sitting outside of this room like when they were deliberating absolutely breaking it like mm, mm. thinking I held this I'm quite honestly I was so powerfully in that I can't believe I didn't manifest failing yeah yeah <laughs> like, if we're gonna you know like I couldn't believe that it didn't so but I got dragged back into the room and and I was sitting there and thinking oh my god oh my god they don't know what to say and they said uh, Mariska Anderson would like and they just speak spear we'd like to welcome you into the scientific community blah, 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 blah. and I I was like it did you you me, yes I, I'm okay I, you passed me or whatever and they're like yeah and I burst into tears like because mm. yeah and I and I thought yes I can't believe I did it but as I walked out of the room I fully expected this I, I remember I remember it like I'm there now <laughs> I fully expected this like blanket of worthiness to like mm. settle through my cells and just sit in my gut and make me stand taller and it didn't and I thought mm, maybe it takes a while maybe it, you know, it hasn't sunk in yet it hasn't sunk in yet I love it I'll wait I'll wait I'll yeah. wait for the worthiness mm. <laughs> yeah I, I mean I honestly really thought and I didn't know it was sort of worthiness exactly um that might not have been the term I would have used at the time but like made itness or like I'm there now yeah. so ridiculous yeah 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 yeah. I waited and I waited and I waited and then I realized okay I can either go and get a post-grad degree now or and and teach and become a professor and do the thing but I've had a miserable time and I don't feel good I don't feel good about it at all Mm -mm. I think I would have been braver if I hadn't done the if I quit like I'm I would have had more self-worth maybe if I had quick so there's mm. definitely bits where I was like this is just bullshit terrible bullshit it's so it's so horrible isn't it I've, I've done stuff like this before because my I was only giggling when you said I could go and be a professor because I got three degrees before I realized that the piece of paper wasn't going to make me feel better about myself what? and I'm like what the hell was I doing? And it's exactly what you said. And, you know, one of the things that I say all the time to clients, because it's been so hard one for me Mm -hmm. is by virtue of the simple fact you were born, you are worthy. You do not have to earn it. You do not have to externalize it. You do not have to have a piece of paper, a fancy car, X amount of dollars in the bank account, or look like Kim Kardashian or whatever, you know, whoever you you want to worship a 
person or a deity, I should say. You don't have to write exactly. It's 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 that's not something that we're we necessarily grow up with, and that no, is something exactly. that I am a little jealous of. I know that people have a lot of um, religious trauma and there's mm. undoing, unpacking and, you know, untangling stuff mm. there too at times. But I, and there, yeah, well, a lot of, a lot of people, that seems to be the only way um, that people are kind of born and, and taught that they are inherently worthy. Mm. Or even if there's so many um contingencies hanging off of it or all of that sort of stuff like I just never knew I just it's so stunning to me that yeah, that's it's amazing reality it? it's so cool you can just decide <laughs> after you well I, but I think never ever taking anything away from our parents but we also are you know in nature and nurture so not only do we have the genetic yeah. code that came from our parents and also inherently carries trauma through generational lines but we also lived in the household with you know whether it's parents caregivers whoever whoever were your right. key caregivers and if they weren't brought up knowing their worth how the hell like unless they did a hell of a lot of healing which is what thankfully our generation is you know starting to look at themselves and taking responsibility yep. for actually unraveling the shitty stories um how would we how would we have had that experience and so then i guess the I don't know, like in a, in a way I feel sad about that, but in another way I'm like this is what the whole concept of wild and finally fucking free is like Absolutely. no one is going to come and give me any external thing that will make me feel good about myself. It is my responsibility to chip away at all the crap that I've been taught that is actually not the truth right? and actually right. be free. Um, yeah. And that's where I feel like, you know, never ever taking away from the fact that getting a PhD is a very you know it's hard one it's yeah I know and you know you're sticking your head, your tongue out I think the same I found my thesis for my master's the other day and it was some ridiculously long like you know right. the 18 paragraphs version yeah. of, you know with the bloody bloody blah and the new blah 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 and I'm just I know. like I, absolutely I have a master's ugh. in immunology and I look at that too and I'm like Ugh, why why would they like that <laughs> yes so what happened? You, you so the the worthiness angels did not come and bestow on you a golden oh. halo of worthiness ripped off. No, what happens didn't. next? What do you do um, from there? Right. So, <laughs> well, I finished I finished the thesis in the states uh, yep. with with my partner Jeffrey, who's mm -hmm. lovely, and um, I finished that off. And I went, came back here, and I graduated, and still there was no mm, glitter. Or anything. <laughs> um, yeah, so I was like, Bleh. I thought, okay, well, and it wasn't so much a, I need to give myself this worthiness. It was, what am I going to do now? But I want to do it my way. Yes. So um, I was back in the states. I was on a tourist visa, so I was like, okay, what am I going to do with myself while I'm here, just sort of hanging out? Yep. Um, I'll write a book. Uh -huh. And I knew what kind of book I wanted to write. I, and this is, this is, this is interesting for me because it is, it's, it's my true self, like right from when I was little, that was always frowned upon and poked at and everything by everybody else. Like it was, I loved movies. I loved books. I loved, but I loved certain types of things with little bits and pieces in them. So I thought, right, I want to write a book where it feels like that for me all the time. So I started writing this book and um, the title just kind of landed in my head, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. Olivia Jones and the Burning Crockett Kismet Map. Oh, that's and, a cool name. And I just started writing and I couldn't stop. And it was so exciting. Oh, my goodness. It was so exciting. And I finished that book um, a few years later, actually, <laughs> because I thought it's not good enough. And it wasn't, by the way. It, when I first wrote it, it was absolutely it was <laughs> the intention was there but it was it was crap it was a good um, draft it was a good draft yes it was it, yes exactly <laughs> it was clay right to be molded um there was so much but I didn't know like there's I didn't realize I mean I knew I my PhD taught me that I could write a book mm -hmm. about the most boring thing in the world yes so I knew that because I'd done that that I could write this book perfect uh, but I didn't think at all that an agent would ever want it that they would ever find it worthy <laughs> should we continue with that uh and I didn't know and I didn't think that I could do it myself on self-publishing because mm -hmm. the whole 
uh, God, it all just seemed way too much, mm. way too scary, and I couldn't do it. That's what I told myself. And yeah. so I thought, but I, I do want something. Uh, <laughs> I do want something, and this is the whole shortly. Uh, I do want something <laughs> location independent that I can do anywhere, anytime, and I want to, like, help people. And so when I stumbled across coaching coaching yes. as lots of and people do as lots yes. of people do and it was Steve Chamberlain and um, oh I want to see your dog <laughs> my dogs I tell you I don't even know whether the audience can hear because this microphone is actually quite good but my dogs have been barking non-stop all day and I'm like far out not on podcast day you can bark any other time of the day just not on podcast day anyway continue no worries, no worries. so I, I kind of I just, I thought, right, this is the thing because I love um, working things out with people. I love helping people get to where they want to go. Like I used to do it with the work that I was doing with a PhD. That was the most fun thing, working with vineyard owners, like getting them, getting helping their mindset. I didn't even know what that was at the time. Yes. And so I went, I was like full gung-ho and I got trained mm-hmm. and I got a website and I got a PayPal account and I, I, I think I'd already joined and I think maybe you, this is maybe where I know you from. I, mm. I don't know, but Denise Duffield Thomas, Lucky yes, Bitch. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> lucky Bitch. I was going to say either Lucky Bitch, Money Boot Camp, or B School. That's how I know most people uh, online. Yeah, but, yeah, not B School. I was like, oh my God, I can't afford that. I want that. <laughs> I can't. So, but I joined Lucky Bitch when it was like, wow. It was like maybe 800 people in the Facebook yeah, group. Yeah, which yeah. Was so yeah, amazing. Yeah. So amazing. And every, there were so many coaches in there and so many other people. It was just, wow. And um, I <laughs> I started off with doing purpose sessions, and that was amazing. I loved them. I loved the one-off purpose sessions. Mm-hmm. I really, 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 really tried so hard with marketing and showing up, you know, got to show up every day. You got to, mm-hmm. you got to. What's, I can't even remember the lingo now, but there was so much like the coaching lingo of like, um, yeah, showing up, being real and like, mm. constantly being on camera. And like, I know now that you can do it without having to do that. Absolutely. But then 2014, mm-hmm. uh, no, it was all like, you know, you were like charging super high fees for, oh, yeah. like, just, yeah, mm. it just sort of went, it was huge. But I started out doing $30 one off positions and mm-hmm. they were so cool and I loved them and I was pretty good at them actually. Yes. <laughs> because they're your genius. <laughs> <laughs> One off $30 per positions do not make an income there. No. They no. So I had to it did all the things and I got a coach and I raised prices and I did longer term stuff and blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I now know I should have hired people. But so I was yeah just struggling constantly and then also struggling, but trying to drop the struggle, you know, uh, get off the struggle bus and hustling, but don't hustle, like chillpreneur, laid back, yada, yada, mm-hmm. all of that. Like mm-hmm. I, I couldn't, I was sort of stuck between all of that and I just kept falling and falling. So the big leap was like, ta-da, I'm coaching people, I'm trained. And there was that whole thing, um, leap and was your wings what is it your, your wings, wings on the way yes. down yeah yep, yep. 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 well mine did not they didn't and I thought I really thought they would every time I spent money on a coach every mm. time I spent money on any of the, like trying to figure anything out and I don't mean just the 97 dollar pdfs I mean like proper full-on big mm. investment mm-hmm. coaching and funnily enough paying somebody else money doesn't automatically make you money <laughs> Really annoying, actually. As much as those coaches want you to believe that it will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, apparently, investment banking is probably what I should have been doing with it because that's the only, you're not going to get an immediate, yeah, no. Yeah. So I just couldn't do the things that they said to do. And they didn't, when I did, they didn't work for me anyway. And I just felt like a fraud the entire time. Mm. And it just got, it went on and on and on and on to a point where I wasn't so bad actually it was like $25,000 in debt which is not that terrible I mean you know it's it's whatever but uh, I was also sick like yeah 
yeah, I'd gotten sick. My my heart had inflammation, not proper full myocarditis or anything like that, but just that I, yeah, I had inflammation throughout my entire system. Mm. And it wasn't good. <laughs> and I was just constantly exhausted. And I didn't know what was wrong. And I was just I burnt out, completely yeah. burnt out. Yeah. And the pit <laughs> that I ended up in, um, was I, I had to, I had no other way of getting out of that twenty five twenty five thousand dollars worth of debt. I had no way of crawling out of that like bit by bit because I was so burned out I couldn't do anything. Yeah. I couldn't go and get a job. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I was just like doctors are saying you've just got to stop. You just got to rest. So I ended up having to do what it's like a mini bankruptcy. Yeah, in New Zealand, and no asset procedure because I'd sold everything, and that was my low 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 point where I was like you can't do this and it wasn't like you can't do this you're wonderfully worthy or whatever I had tried I knew I knew through coaching this was it's taught me some lovely things taught me yes. some wonderful things I knew that I inherently needed was worthy yes but I still didn't feel it mm -hmm. even with RTT I was a trained transformational like yeah coach person whatever like on all of the reiki and bits and pieces that i'd had and like all the different things and modalities and mm -hmm. stuff that i had tried and i didn't feel it like i still didn't feel it mm -hmm. and so i and that was yeah five years of it, it was 2019 that happened mm -hmm. five years of like banging my head against the brick wall and just trying 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 um and yeah i just i just I, I fully crashed and i had to i had to just build everything back up in a whole new way after that because that was the pit yeah. and I wouldn't say it was eternal despair um and the only reason why is because I remember J.K. Rowling's quote of rock bottom became the foundation that I built the rest yes. of my cool I'm there yes. now, uh, so what now and this is what yeah. I want to reflect back to you because all I'm hearing is not someone because I really really want to bring this to people's awareness that are listening this is not a journey of failing it's a journey of finding out what environments and external attachments did not provide you with what you were seeking that's and it. Nothing, nothing, nothing does. Nothing. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Maybe something in nature, but then you're part of it and you're reflected in it and it's, you know, yes. maybe, maybe then. Yeah, exactly. But an awareness of your inherent worthiness, my inherent, it was not, yeah, something that I ever, that I felt. And I still probably thought at that point that it needed, that there needed to be some grand moment or, mm. you know, a switch that got flicked, but I couldn't find it for love nor money. <laughs> now, uh, like, you know, like something like, how do I, I know this, I believe it, I see it in everybody else. Where's mine? How do I feel that? How do yeah. I know that? Mm -hmm. Like right in here. Um, and I, I realized, well, I sort of, yeah, through, through, doing what I really wanted to do which was write my book or write any book or start writing or just be a writer create, really yeah create yeah mm -hmm. and it was you know young adult fiction so it's the J.K. Rowling which is yes that you know that's my thing I guess um but it was only when I only with, through writing this book I've got it in front of me that's all <laughs> so I keep pointing at it it's like one of my copies um only through writing it have I realized that um, all of the threads and things that I enjoyed as a child are woven through this book. And, it, yep. and none of those things came to me because I had a qualification yep. or an experience other than just being who I was. Mm -hmm. And then I realized, oh, oh, just kidding, I might get choked up. But it is a, it's a huge thing to realize then that the bits and pieces that made me who I am are are exactly how I'm creating this these stories this this series and then that just made me go okay that's what I'm supposed to be doing then mm. yeah. and I've just been doing yeah I've just been doing that but it's been it's still I'm not you know there's no bestseller or anything yet <laughs> but yes it's, yes it's, it's, it's been a massive process in and of itself as well a huge learning experience but that that main thing was oh I've created something that has nothing to do with any of the things that I have 
learned. It's gotten, I'm sure bits and pieces of it are in there just because yes. they're part of who I am. But yeah. not, none of the things that I absolutely love, like the, the, the little, little things a character will say or where they are or how they interact or any of that bits that make me go, ooh, yes. ooh. I know what's going to happen or any of that. Like none of that has come through a qualification that somebody else bestowed on me. It's all come through me learning how to express the stuff that I felt as a kid watching Indiana Jones. Like that's it. That is literally it. And I'm like, well, then that's all I need. Yeah. This is, this is the magic of, because I, like I really, really relate to what, you were talking about in the coaching industry back in those times where the the shared wisdom, and I'm air quoting the crap out of that, shared wisdom was you have to do it in a particular way. You have to be on all the time. You must write a blog post three times a week. You must post on social media at least four times a day. Bloody, 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 bloody. You've got to show up and be vulnerable. You've got to show up and be vulnerable and you've got to, and I'm like, that is fantastic for about 1% of the people that are naturally wanting to share at that level, that frequency, that whatever, but it doesn't speak to anyone else's preferences, quirks, loves, and my big thing that I'm trying on for size in this version of my business is my joy is enough. Like that is the only business plan I need. There is no plan. Let's let's be honest. There's no plan. The the fact that you like you were literally like wriggling your body when you were saying, you know, all the little bits and pieces and what that character would say and what would happen next. And I know that that's your soul wagging its tail. And right. that's what we are meant to be following. And yet we've been positioned in environments you know through conditioning through whatever and especially in academia there's definitely you know very and then you know I've just come out of you know being a corporate clone for the last five years so similar (laughs) sort of thing like there's expectations of who you should be and how polished you should be and you god forbid you don't swear and you can't do that and you can't do this and whatever yeah all these environments that don't fit us that disconnect us from the things that make our soul feel like it's wagging its tail. And I keep on coming back to this feeling I've always had that we're like, you know, there's this collective group of humans on the planet at the moment and we all form this beautiful little energetic matrix, wraps around the world, goes out into the ether, however you want to, I'm waving my hands around. I know no one can see this, but it's very dramatic. It's very Italian hands. (laughs) I've got no Italian at all. But anyway, that's fine. Um, But my point is that when we are trying to fit ourselves in environments that don't nourish us and in ways of being that don't nourish us, um, what we are inviting is unfortunately burnout because our body cannot sustain that environment. But also we're leaving holes in the matrix of what we're actually meant to be doing because you were born with a gift inside of you, multiple gifts inside of you, and your job is just to deliver them. Yep, totally. But we're we're taught that it has to be more complicated than that you need to do it in a particular way or you need to you know whatever um and I think the goal in what you're sharing is you know yes none of what went into that book is from the pieces of paper but there's also I'm looking at your journey going there is still a beautiful unfolding of like you said writing a PhD taught me that I could write something right it gave you evidence right yes you don't want to write that dry scientific shit and you want to write beautiful stuff that you are now writing but it did tell you something and even the coaching experience it's like yeah I liked Absolutely. one little bit of it but I didn't like having to be on in the way that I was right. being taught I had to be on so it's just not the right environment right and every single bit of that informs you know it's like nudge 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 your body was talking to you you know maybe you didn't listen your body starts talking to you in bigger and bigger ways and that's where burnout yeah. comes from um Can I ask, when you were in the stage where you could not do anything, like your physical body was like, time out, Mariska, this is bullshit, I'm not doing this anymore. Yep. I was in hospital for a little while and all I could do was lay there just going, well, actually I wasn't in hospital, just on and off. It wasn't actually, it was just like a couple of days here and there and then convalescence. But still, like a consistently, yeah, unable to be sustainable health-wise. Can you? 
talk to us about the the process because the word that's coming to my mind is surrender. Like you've got nothing Mm -hmm. else you can do. You've got to surrender. Was that an easy process when you got to that stage or did you still fight like I got to do this and I've got to like whatever? I fought it for a long time. I may still be fighting it a little bit, I guess, because there is a huge, that's where you, I guess, it would be really obvious that your inherent worthiness is, but I don't, I only know that now, like, because I'm, I sometimes feel like I am, and then I pull myself back out of it. You know, I still have all the stories. I still have lots and lots of stories. I know, yeah. but I know those stories now. <laughs> yeah, I, I see you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you. Um, I don't know if I did surrender, like laying there and just, or just like letting it wash over me. I just, there was never a feeling of release. Mm-hmm. And I would have expected a feeling of release mm-hmm. with surrender of like, <sighs> But I have done that multiple times since, over and over, because it doesn't stay that way for very long. No, exactly. Reels yes. back in and, and tightens it all back up. This is so perfect we're having this conversation because it's it's continuing on. I know these podcasts won't come out in the order necessarily that I do them, but it's so funny how there's these threads that turn up. Um, to me, the I know when I'm expanding Right. When I'm right at the edge of something, you know, that feels possible versus feels, oh, that's a bit, oh, I don't know about that. The fear comes. That's that's how I know I'm at the edge of my expansion zone because the fear. But now, like you say, I know the story, but I also go, hello, fear, my old friend. Mm-hmm. This is getting a yep. little bit tiresome. Mm-hmm. I call my fear brain my lizard brain. I call him Brian. And I'm like, Brian, dude, please. Can you just take a seat in the beanbag? Have a cup of tea. Have a beer if you need to. I don't care. Just let me trust myself. Yes. Like I know you're trying to keep me safe, and I think you know that a fear is a very good emotion for us to have. Yeah, it's not yep. very helpful when we're trying to live no. the life that we're meant to be leading. Um. So anyway, um, and so I'm honoring the fact that you're saying like surrender, and then things get tight and tense again, and surrender, and then things get tight and tense again. Well, I feel like that is such an important thing for people to understand that we're not talking about, you know, you dug yourself out of this hole and everything is sunshine and light and rainbows and unicorns. The universe is always in balance. You're going to expand. And then the natural opposite is contraction. And so we get to be in charge of how much we allow ourselves to pull back. And we get to be the decider about the new stories and we get to you know create new reality. Um, but it's not, it's not like waving a magic wand, right? Like, let's be honest about this. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've just started working with a personal trainer again, and I feel like it's that muscle building, isn't it? It's like, oh, challenge right. again. It's funny you said magic wand and I've got one. So. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> oh my thought, goodness it's right there I'm gonna do it <laughs> that's so cool I need to get another photo with you with your magic wand oh my goodness okay the image that, the image that came to me when you were when you were talking about yeah the digging out of the hole is you, you come out on top of the the, the basic hole and then mm. it, it, it literally feels like it feels like you've suddenly had a pair of skis strapped here and there's moguls mm-hmm. like you're just and yeah, and it's just you've got to relax. Actually, that's a good analogy for me. I need to remember that. You got to relax and just go with the flow a bit. But also, I'm finding I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I've taken off. I'm going. I'm going. And then there's like a smooth bit, and I've just sort of stopped. And I've got to like, come on. And that happens on and off. Mm-hmm. And that's when I know I need to surrender and and relax. But yeah, yeah. the yeah the word probably that I would use is let go. <laughs> but letting go, like uh, that's something that I think that's my growth edge at the moment is to, you know, step into choosing a story of like following my joy in business is more than enough. Like I literally don't have a business plan. I just gave up a perfectly good corporate job because I knew that Not I was you. bleeding myself dry and, yeah. you know, I was heading towards yeah. burnout. I wasn't there but I've gone there many times before in my life Mm -hmm. and I'm just like I'm not available for that anymore I won't do that to myself and I know that in my heart of hearts one of my gifts is is helping women to question the beliefs they have about themselves so that they can create different realities it's enough follow the things that feel light for me and that feels deeply terrifying and deeply freeing all at the same time yeah like that's the you know the the balance right yeah um so let's 
Let's talk a little bit about, because you, when you were writing the answers to these questions, you were talking about the concept of rewilding. So what, what does that mean for you? Because yeah, that wild right. is such a strong word for me, like wild and free. I actually have never yeah. told this story, but um, I don't think you can see back there, but anyway, back Back there on my little yeah. altar, I have a picture of um, a woman on a motorbike with a leather jacket on that I saw on Instagram, and it's actually called the Wild and Free jacket. And I oh. fell in love with this jacket. Anyway, I found one, so I now have one. We've just bought a motorbike a year ago. The feeling I get on the back of a motorbike is like complete joy. Like if I, yeah. I always say, I shouldn't keep on putting this out there, but I always say like if I died on the back of a motorbike, I'd be perfectly happy. Like that is like. Right. That's my yeah, favorite place to be in the world. Like I just, I love Doesn't it. Mean I love, it I love happened it. for many, many years. Thank yes, you very delete, much. delete, delete. I'm not <laughs> ordering that. Thank you very much, universe. But the concept of wild and free to me is that like breaking the stories, breaking the conditioning, breaking the, you know, the feeling that worthiness comes from outside of us. So what right. does rewilding mean to you and how is it unfolding at the moment? So it means, to, oh, that's a really good question. Rewilding means to me that I get to be supported doing what I want, even when, even if it's hard, even when I'm sitting in front of a computer all day and it's beautiful outside, mm-hmm. it, I'm still doing what feels like me. Yeah. Like I, I love being outside. I love, I love being on a motorbike as well. I love all of that. And there's so much, like, I'd love to get back into travel and like go to all the places that I write about in my books actually and do get, that would be fantastic. But the one thing that I'm accepting, allowing, bringing in, like letting settle, I guess, is one of the ways that I really feel it Mm. is that this book I'm doing myself I am I have self-published it I did I did do the agent thing for a bit and but I realized that it felt the same so I was seeking somebody else's approval approval and I can learn the stuff or pay other people or do things whatever doesn't it doesn't matter like it's it's important to me to not be part of an institution Mm. other than my own and Every single day, I just make, I try to, I should say, I intend Mm -hmm. to make decisions for myself based wholly in myself. And that, so it's like a, I suppose, like an, un. well, one of my coaching programs used to be called Unfurl. So this is so funny, it's come out of my mouth. It's like an unfurling rewilding, where it's slowly being rolled out as I stretch and push and allow it. But it is a conscious decision. It's not. It's not something that just comes easily by any stretch. Um, yes, it's something that I've got to decide in every moment. Yeah, because it's foreign, right? We're not taught that we, we can have the agency that is yeah. required to actually right. live a life that's literally by our design. Right. So I, yeah, deeply honor your um, allergy to institutions. <laughs> like, 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 literally, because I'm, yeah, I feel like that's part of my journey as well. Is like saying no, those rules don't apply to me. Here's mine right. again and again and again and again mm-hmm. and again. Deeply uncomfortable because it's, mm-hmm. you know, um, it pushes all the way up against our stories of what it takes to be like a good person, a good woman, a, you know. How, how will other people think of me? Like any of the, you know, the old tried and true trinity of um, doubts and fears that are the biggies, which is right. unloved, don't belong, not good yeah. enough. Like, you know, yeah. the holy yeah. trinity of shit stories. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, holy trinity of fuckery. Yeah, exactly. Mind fuckery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, was an, there was a situation that happened that made me decide that for sure. Yes. And that's like other people can be institutions as well, like mm, individuals. Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the, one of the, when I was sending my work to agents, which, which was quite all right. And I, I got good feedback and that was nice. And a story that I read about an, about a, a guy who'd published a best-selling book with an, he had an agent and I uh, can't remember the publisher's name, but it was a bestseller and they'd done, it was great. This man, in order to show exactly how unrealistic, I suppose it is to, to, to give yourself any self-worth based on whether or not your book gets accepted by an agent or whatever, yes. he pitched this best-selling book to 20 different people now some of them were publishers some of them were agents one of them included the publisher that actually published his book as a bestseller and he got rejected by all of them <laughs> every single one 
this book is already a bestseller and it's like you could I could wait forever for somebody else to like it you know like somebody else in a particular position and it might it might hit them that day or it might hit them the next day Mm -hmm. and and they'll just like eh eh but it might have got them like you just don't know it's so arbitrary and I I do believe feel know that you know it's all energy like Mm, yeah absolutely all of that sort of thing but the um it's really important to me to do it myself now Mm. because I only want the book itself to please people and if that's if people enjoy it now I've done my job like you know that's and that's all that matters that's literally it it's so simple exactly it's so simple and there's no institution involved other than somebody enjoying it yes so and joy simplicity is the of energy and magnetism. Yeah. I love it. I love the fact because to me, when I'm hearing you speak, that's a woman who's standing in her power rather than waiting for someone to bestow the worth or the approval or the whatever, like fill in the blank here. Um, and that is constant, true freedom. Constant process though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We're not saying one and done. Like God, we'd be fibbing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's draw this magical conversation to the close of introduce your beautiful book, what the book's about, uh-huh. how we can get our hands on it. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to have to take another photo when we finish recording of you with the book so that I can okay. share that as well. <laughs> okay, so, cool. yeah, sh- so you go on this process, you do the burnout, you decide you're going to write and you say, screw it, I'm going to write for, for me. Like this is what I'm meant to be doing, right? And this yep. book comes out of you. Yeah, the book had, the book had come out of me, but yeah, I re I refined it based on what agents and so. I mean, I just really worked my ass off at the craft of and bringing it to the best thing it could be. Because I won't, I I can't, and I learned this is another thing coaching told me is mm. that if I'm not feeling so like that, I can back it, including myself. Like I couldn't get on you know Facebook and do all those lives all the time because I felt like a fraud I felt like I, I couldn't back myself yeah so whether or not I could have and I just could have decided that it doesn't you know whatever so I needed to get this book to the point where I can actually hold it and I will in a second yes. hold it and be like read this you this will enjoy it, it yes and, and it's just got all of the tiny little, little bits of so I should probably say what it is it's a young adult like magical realism adventure mm. <laughs> So bad it. It's like categorizing anything, including myself. So the back of the book reads, Olivia Jones is too impulsive for her own good. And one day it's going to bite her on the bottom. <laughs> At least that's what her lovely mum always says. Olivia completely disagrees until one Monday in October anyway, because it's one thing to sneak onto a school bus trip you've been forbidden to go on, but quite another to be kidnapped by government agents and then come face to face with true evil, especially when evil has an assistant. Olivia's lovely mum. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. That makes me want to read it. Where can I get my hands on a copy? Amazon. I love the cover too. Yeah. Amazon. Okay. Amazon. We're going to share that in the show notes. I'm a big lover of that type of book. I've actually got it. You will love it. I can tell you now you will love it. I'm going to get my hands yeah. on it. it I, I, and I don't, there's not, so the other thing about this whole journey for me, find something that you can go, I made this, you will love it spend your money on it yeah buy it like that kind of thing like and I could never do that with coaching I couldn't yeah. I'd be like oh only if you want to like I don't know if, yeah. I mean it's okay <laughs> because you couldn't promise the outcomes and I wanted mm. to but I am so proud of this book and I know that people will enjoy it people's kids and everybody it's it's a it's a rip roaring adventure See, yep. this this is the, the energy of being unapologetic about the gift and the result of the gift is. And I've is, never felt that before about anything. Yes, because never. you haven't been on the right track and the right environment doing the, the right stuff. And I don't mean right as in right and wrong. I mean your natural gifted right. genius yeah. sweet spot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Been so cool to learn your adventure. And like we said at the beginning of the interview, this is not a story about trying and failing. It's a story about trying something and learning. Um, it's like, what's that quote about the light bulb? Is it Thomas Edison says, Yeah, it, he I tried can... 10,000 times or yeah. something. I'm probably I'm yeah, screwing this I up completely. Fail to, I didn't fail to create the light bulb 10, 
thousand. I didn't times. fail. I just I just found nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine exactly. ways of not creating create um, electricity. Yeah, something like not that. how to do it. How to not yeah. do it. Exactly. Exactly. Which is really what our journey through life is all about. And Mm -hmm. if we learn earlier and earlier and we start having these conversations about it's okay to change your mind, it's okay to be proven wrong, it's okay to learn that the piece of paper won't give you the worth, Um, and it's really, really okay to just be honest about what you've gone through because by doing that we give other people the opportunity to learn and invitations to feel into what they really want to do right so yeah. deeply honoring you in sharing oh, your story as you always it's been an honor to have be heard by you witnessed it's, by you thank it's you. so beautiful I yeah I this has been a real magical experience for me I think this is number four 15 that I'm recording Ooh, and so every exciting. single story like you know you read the ants you know the answers is the, the you know bits yeah, and pieces yeah. that you send through but there's always a new depth or a new learning or a new like you know those golden nuggets that you just go oh my god that makes so much sense it really hits home for me um and that's my deep wish is the intention of like someone to listen to these and get that like that just hit me in the middle of the forehead like a big slap yeah <laughs> lovingly <laughs> yeah absolutely no matter what you're doing mm. if you feel that joy like it's how you're doing whatever you're doing is how maybe bring that into everything else like if I look into look so this I would consider now to be my purpose yes. which I never even though I was trying to help other people find theirs and simply like that flow feeling of joy and like how how do I bring that into what I'm doing now and like trusting that that's for you new concept for me Hmm. um because I've definitely got a frame of like you have to work hard at everything like it's Mm -hmm. it has to be you know duty responsibility blah, blah 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 and this whole concept of just following what feels good and being guided by what feels good and knowing that, like you said before with the book, it's all an energy thing. The energy of joy by definition is magnetic anyway. So you don't even, that, that's it. Like that's as simple as it can get. And yeah. I look back on what you're talking about with the coaching industry and I think no wonder my first business was so, like I did some things that felt really, really good. And then when I got kind of pulled into or convinced into more business yeah. coaching, which is my professional background, it right. felt less and less good. And I look back and I'm like, I just put my power outside of myself again and again and again. I let other coaches convince me that the way of making, and it was always like, oh, the way of making more money. And I'm like, what if making more money is actually not my goal? What if actually feeling really good about what I deliver to the world and the money being the result of it, like the happy accident? Right. And that's talked about a lot more now, like, or at least, you know, it started to be. Yes. Um, I I agree. Like there's a different, I think, one thing that has always confused me mm. and sort of held me back was that the joy is great, mm. but there's like a deep contentment, satisfaction, pull kind of joy that's deeper yes. that, that, that yeah. grabs you. And I always um, love that feeling of it's called eudaimonia. It's my favorite feeling. It's Ooh. excited anticipation. It's like a kid on Christmas morning. What's you know just before they remember it's Christmas morning, it's like oh, something really amazing is going to happen today. What is it? Yes, you know that sort of traditional like you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas morning. Yeah, yeah. That that feeling like before you even remember why. That yes, buzz. I love that feeling, and I love that feeling when I'm writing. But that's not the feeling of that deep centered like joy, yes. which is like I get what you're saying. You, I'm. And, but that confused me for the longest time is mm. that I could be very serious but still feel like I was in the right spot and yes. not realize that that is also joyful. Like, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, Contentment is yeah. one of my key, like when I think about how I want to feel, like grounded, joyful, absolutely. Free, mm. absolutely, always been mm. two of my guiding words. Um, content is often one of the ones that comes top of mind because I have those, and particularly actually, I'm also living in the country. Like I have that in like my husband's a mad king gardener. I take no credit whatsoever, but I go outside and like my mulberry trees full of mulberries at the moment. And I'm like, oh, is this not the most divine, deep, like well of like a bay of plenty contentment that I get, which is that 
yeah, overwhelming gratitude and yeah. just, yeah, yeah, that deep satisfaction. Yeah. Um, yeah, to me that's like joy is beautiful, but I find that joy is shorter lived than that deep, you know. Yes. The yeah. thing that rises from the very right. bones of you. Yes. Yeah, that, that's like, that delicious. When I was, when you used to, when I used to hear joy and like feeling it, and there's a lot of you know um, the Abraham Hicks kind of stuff, yes. like you know, like feeling joy, feeling upbeat, and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think that that's, I think that that's not the guiding light feeling of joy. Like the that feeling is much deeper. And I, if I, I wish I'd known that, but I know, I know it now. So there you yeah, go. yeah, <laughs> and trust the timing. I always, always, always will say that. As a coach, a friend, a mum, whatever. Yeah. Trust the timing. Yep. Things unfold as they're meant to. And um, yeah, the the journey is always like the little breadcrumb. So which is exactly what you've shared. Like, yeah, there's the windy road, but it's really back to all the things that you loved as a kid because that's yep. what your purpose is. So yep. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. I really appreciate it. You reminded me to just also like to be excited about the next step and the next step because sometimes you I, I forget I forget like I'm like I know what I'm going to do next mm-hmm. I'm not you know and it's sort of like a bit of a drudgery at times but ultimately I'm on my way now like this yes. is what I, yeah I'm doing exactly. the right thing it doesn't even matter like yes of course it would be wonderful to make you know loads of money of course yes yeah. but but it's more it is definitely more far more deep than that yeah absolutely yeah is that deep satisfaction I think that's the other satisfaction and contentment to me like you know I want to because I I've had my my dad passed away at 91 and you know we had conversations when he was you know he was paleoing for about eight weeks and um one of the conversations that we had in many different ways was you know I'm like do you like how do you feel about your life like what's there and he's like the things that matter to me is that deep connection with the people that I love experiences and that sense of satisfaction that comes from doing something that you meant to do. I'm like, yeah, if I can arrive at my, whenever that is (laughs) not early and not on a motorbike, (laughs) just putting that out there. Um, then yeah, job done, job done. Like, yeah, Yeah. life well lived. It's like, Mm. it's a sense of completeness, isn't it? In the Mm. moment. Thank you so much. Hello there, beautiful. Kylie here. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode. I have some great news for you. I have a podcast home now. So you'll find everything about our new episodes, key takeaways and events coming up at www.kyliepatchett.com.au. Patchett is P-A-T-C-H-E-T-T. Now, one of the things that I'm noticing in all of these stories is that there's common threads about being able to access our deepest truth in times of midlife metamorphosis. These threads include healing stories about self-abandonment, trauma, leaky boundaries, childhood conditioning, learning to dissolve fear and self-doubt and not enoughness and making other people's needs more important than our own. And finally, learning how to nourish ourselves. So actually understanding how to connect to our heart and understand what it is that we want from our life. How do we want to feel? Who do we want to be in relationship with? Who is better off actually being outside of our boundaries these days? Ultimately, this journey through midlife metamorphosis is all about coming home to our magic and our power and our magnificence and our dreams and desires. And that is why I'm super excited to share with you that we have a three-day Midlife Magic Masterclass series coming. It's called Coming Home and it's across the three evenings because holy moly, when I started pouring this out of my soul, there was so much that I couldn't possibly cover it in one night. My plan is to have it super, super interactive. So it's not just going to be slides and me talking over them. Boring. It's actually going to be me asking you questions, having you do journal prompts, settling into your heart. We'll be doing some breath and some yoga and we'll be using those tools to really get clear on what it is that you want, how you're actually getting in your own way and setting you free to freaking create it. I've got 33 seats that are free. About half of them are taken already. So about 15 more seats to go. And you will find the registration page now at my new online home, which is kyliepatchett.com.au. 
love to see you there. It's going to be absolutely brand breaking. And yeah, for usually a coaching session, even a group coaching session with me for four and a half hours, that's a lot of cash. And this time I just want to open up our community and interact with you in real time because your response to this podcast has been breathtaking and I'm so pleased that these stories are resonating and I know deep in my soul the reason they're resonating is because you see yourself in all of these other amazing women. So just know that if they can overcome fear, if they can heal old conditioning, if they can learn to connect with their own needs, you can too. Join me for coming home November 15th to 17th. If you can't make it live, that's totally fine, although it's going to be way better if you can. But if you can't make it live, we will be putting replays out each day and uh, I can't wait to see you there. So, yeah, kyliefatchett.com.au. Yay. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.